Property values in nine metro area counties saw an unprecedented spike today. Yeah, officials in some counties say homeowners should expect their property taxes to increase by 40 to 50 percent. Douglas County saw the largest median residential increase of 47 percent. The lowest was 33 percent, and that was Denver. The metro area also includes Adams, Arapaho, Boulder, Broomfield, Elbert, Jefferson, and Larimer counties. Political specialist Sean Boyd joins us now. Sean, Colorado lawmakers are rushing to find some way to kind of ease the financial burden here, but they need to do it fast before the 2023 lawmaking term ends, which is in less than two weeks. Right, and one of the senators leading the effort told me he's not sure they're going to be able to make it happen before the end of the session, which is May 8th. Senator Chris Hansen says they may need to come back for a special session. There are also ballot measures in the works, but at this point, it's a race against time. The new property taxes kick in January 1st. We've never seen, I think we, we would all agree, something this historic or unprecedented. County assessors are sounding an alarm about what is shaping up to be the biggest tax increase in Colorado history, upwards of three and a half billion dollars based on new property valuations. This is coming and it's coming quickly and people are about to get their new assessments that show that huge increase. An increase Michael Fields with Advanced Colorado has been warning about since voters repealed the Gallagher Amendment in 2020, which had essentially capped property tax increases. In anticipation of a big spike, the legislature at the governor's urging passed a bill last year providing a billion dollars in relief. But the increase is beyond what anyone expected, in large part because assessments were done in June of 2022 when home prices were at a high point. And every two years, your house gets reassessed. So this is going to happen again and again and again until our property taxes are, are as high as any, any state in the nation. Fields is working on a ballot measure to permit cap property tax increases at 3%. This is something that we wish the legislature would take on. If they want to make it a 5 or 6% cap, that's fine. What we can't have is 40 or 50% that we have right now. It might sound good at first blush, but just a flat cap on property tax leads to tons of unintended consequences. Senator Chris Hansen says any solution needs to balance helping homeowners without hurting schools and local governments that rely on property taxes. And we're going to do our best to really look hard at the data and come up with a package that balances those two imperatives. We care about education and fire and all these different uh, entities that are funded by property taxes, but it has to be a reasonable amount of increase each year. Hansen assured me the legislature will act but wouldn't say what the relief might look like. It's set aside about $200 million in the budget. But again, the increase will be more than $3.5 billion. Mm -hmm. Field says unless the legislature enacts its own permanent cap on property tax increases, he will bring a ballot measure. Meanwhile, the Bell Policy Center is working on competing initiatives that would backfill any lost revenue to local governments and schools due to a cap with Tabor refunds. It is unlikely any of those ballot measures are going to make this year's ballot, which means it really is up to the legislature to provide some relief. And, you know, we're talking 40, 50, yeah. 60, 70 percent increases in some parts of the state. It will be devastating. Now we know some people might lose their homes. This is going right. to be a big story. We'll see what the legislature does. Sean, thank you.